G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, it's Friday afternoon here in Australia and the market is down a little bit. So is this that weekend retracement that's sort of come a little bit early? Or is there maybe more to see? It's hard to know, we'll just have to wait and see. But BTC dominance, 43%, ETH 16.4% and gas staying around that kind of 40 sort of zone, which is not too bad. It was up around 51 just yesterday, so you know, 46 is better than 51 because we want it to go down, not up, but still not great. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, you know, the, the full Ethereum rollout will be sometime this year and then, you know, we'll all have those, you know, super pennies uh, worth, uh, you know, cents worth here in Australia, worth of fees, that would be really great. And I think that would really solidify Ethereum as the number one platform, even though I guess it still kind of is. It's got the top spot, but, you know, geez, Binance and that, they're not, you know, all that far behind. All right, let's have a look. What's done really well in the last 24 hours? Because we can see a little bit of red there, you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Ethereum Classic still going up far out. What is going on, people? What is going on? All right, let's have a look. Whew, quantum, nearly 70%. Bitcoin diamond, that is, oh, wow. Wouldn't touch it. Yeah, I wouldn't really touch it either because it's just not Ethereum anymore. I, I, when I see things like this and Doge pumping, it really does have me concerned that, you know, some of this is going to be sort of, you know, people trying to pump it up. And then again, you know, you can see it already quickly dumping on people, you know, to get their money back. So some people are getting burnt. But anyway, it is what it is. You know, new people who come to the space, hopefully they don't dump everything into something and just get completely wrecked. But if they do, then that's that's their learning curve. It's unfortunate, you know. Look, I've been burnt in coins before, but I never put everything into one thing where I kind of lost it all. So I was lucky there. I did put money into things that just went to nothing and I lost everything but it wasn't everything I owned so it wasn't kind of the end of the world and that's what I worry about for people that they come in and you know just think yeah I can just you know throw a couple hundred couple of thousand bucks at this random coin and it's going to 1000x and yeah I'm going to have you know hundreds of thousands of dollars and you know then they lose anyway look some great gains there 70 uh, 60 percent 50 percent 30 percent nearly 30 25 you know 23 18 17 16 13 13 basically 13 12 percent i mean there is still heaps of really really good gains to be made at the moment but what about losses are there coins that aren't doing so well uh, there's a couple Bitcoin gold, flow, compound, XRP, Dogecoin is down a little bit, but then back up. Uh, Phantom, Stacks, OKB, Uniswap, uh, Clayton. So look, a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, the gains definitely look like they outweighed the losses from what we just saw in that first part of the screen. But this is really the telling tale sign though. The market is down a little bit. And hopefully it's just a little bit of a weekend retracement that's coming early. Sometimes it does. It comes kind of, you know, Thursday night over in the States, which is sort of, you know, roughly what it would be now. Thursday night sort of slash Friday. Well, not quite Friday morning yet. It's still kind of Thursday night over there. So maybe that's what that is. All right. Gains look pretty good. Losses weren't too bad, but there were definitely uh, some in there. Let's go to the Bitcoin chart and have a look what's actually going on. So again, that 50-day moving average, it is resistance at the moment. As soon as it hits that, it's pretty much selling off. But it's just also getting bought up before it gets to the 100. So this feels like it's just you know, starting to coil tighter and tighter and tighter. And now we're really waiting, excuse me, to see what the you know the move is because it's generally going to be something pretty big when it travels sideways like this now it could travel sideways for quite some time though it's not like it just gets tight tight travels sideways and then has to pop up to the top or you know pop down below it can travel sideways with not too much movement for quite some time but usually at the end of it there is a big move that happens now we're just waiting to see if it's going to be to the upside or the downside my gut feeling says to the upside because there's you know lots of people still getting into bitcoin and even big companies we're going to get onto that soon that's what makes me think we break to the upside i don't think we've reached the peak just yet all right let's have a look at some of these stories so ripple even with the sec ripple sales are up 97 percent in quarter one so they've nearly doubled them but we need to remember they were quite down uh, from the period before that as well so you know i'm not saying it means it's a break even but it's not quite as good as what it can sound 
Now, with the firm att attributing the growth uh, to its focus on RippleNet's on-demand liquidity service, so I'm not sure if there's a lot of institutional buying go on, going on uh, in Ripple, or if it's just kind of whales uh, and the retail market sort of, you know, pumping and all the rest of it. I really don't know. I haven't seen any... Oh, excuse me. Or we should say I haven't seen too many articles where any big companies are coming out saying that they're using Ripple. So that's I'm not really sure whether it's, again, more just whale sort of stuff going on as opposed to real world uh, adoption yeah, by companies, you know, big businesses and things like that. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. In the end, as an investor, if you're bought and you're up 100%, you don't really care who's doing it or what's doing it as long as you're up and, you know, Again, possibly consider taking some profits, but that's not financial advice. That's a personal opinion only. Now, here's another reason that makes me think that, yeah, we're not at the top and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is likely to pump to the upside. So Square's quarterly earnings beat out expectations by more than double thanks to Bitcoin's dramatic rally. Now, Bitcoin alone drove $3.5 billion in revenue. That's an astonishing increase of 1,000% in just 12 months. Good Lord. Now, Bitcoin hasn't gone up 1,000% in 12 months, so please don't get that wrong. But their revenue has gone up 1,000% just from simply getting into Bitcoin and how much it's grown. So we heard from PayPal the other day, their quarter one is up as well. Uh, you know, there's going to be tons of other businesses that are going to have things like this going on. You know, again, imagine how much micro strategy is up in total, not so much earnings, but the value of the price of Bitcoin, even though it's fluctuating at the moment. I mean, if I remember correctly, I think micro strategy bought their Bitcoin. Oh, God, I get the feeling like it was about sort of $17,000, $18,000 uh, was where they bought at. I mean, they've tripled their money and they bought, you know, $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. So they're now sitting on, you know, well over $3 you know, billion worth of Bitcoin. They've, you know, even more. I mean, $1.5 billion uh, and, you know, they've probably tripled, you know, 4x their money from there. So they're doing quite well. And, yeah, they don't have to worry. They're, and the funny thing is, like, uh, what's his name? Michael Saylor says, you know, we'll never sell our Bitcoin. I honestly don't think he has to. I don't know if Bitcoin will ever go down to the prices where they originally bought in, which I think was, you know, I think they got some even less than seventeen, eighteen thousand $18,000. But I get the feeling like the average buy-in price is now around the $20,000 mark. If Bitcoin gets all the way up to, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand, 400000 like people are talking, Bitcoin, I don't think it'll ever get down near 20000 again. I think it'll be lucky to get down to $50,000 if it goes all the way to sort of three, dollars $400,000. I think you'd probably see it level off more somewhere around the $100,000, $150,000 range, but possibly, you know, dipping back into the kind of 70s and 80s. That's definitely a consideration. But $20,000, I think the days of Bitcoin being there are gone. Time will tell, though. It's always the greatest, you know, revealer. People can say a whole lot of stuff, but none of us will really know until time proves us right or wrong. Scaramucci, all right. NYDIG is the custodian for the proposed Bitcoin exchange trade fund from First Trust Advisors and Skybridge Capital. Now, when First Trust and Anthony Scaramucci Skybridge originally applied in mid-March, they left out who the custodian uh, identity uh, would be so they left it blank and now we know it's going to be N NY Dig, excuse me, now boasting BY Mellon as its service provider and cash custodian and NY Dig as the keeper of the keys. Uh, the first Skybridge Trust Bitcoin ETF, sorry, the first trust, yeah, Skybridge Bitcoin ETF Trust attempts to gain an edge in a uh, bustling race for regulatory approval. And look, with that, with those kind of backers behind them, I, I think they're now a really good chance of possibly being the first uh, American Bitcoin ETF because we've got them in Canada and other places around the world and other places are following suit. But with all of this behind them, I think, yeah, they're probably a good chance. So watch for a Bitcoin ETF, possibly not too far away. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it's coming next month. I think... Uh, I forget who it was. Someone put one in and it was put off for another 45 days, whether it was uh, Scaramucci's one or somebody else's, the SEC and that said, no, we want another 45 days. But I, 
I would be surprised if there's not an American Bitcoin ETF by the end of the year. I would be very surprised. All right, Cardano. I mean, you know, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, Kraken has enabled Cardano staking on its platform. So, you know, for a lot of new people, you know, the idea of having cold wallets and hot wallets and, you know, all this kind of stuff, is just too much for them. They'd get lost. They're like, what? I'm used to having my stuff in a bank and the bank does everything for me. Well, Kraken, I mean, it got a sort of a banking license. So it essentially is like a bank. And we're going to get onto a story about that very, very soon. So for people to just be able to go, radio, I want a stake, uh, but I don't want to have to have all these other wallets and do all this crazy stuff. I just want to go to, you know, a one-shop stop. And that's what people love, you know. If they can find an easier way, they will. And they'll pay a little bit of a premium for that easier way, as long as the premium's not too big. So now, if new people coming to the space can go to Kraken, buy Cardano, and they stake it for them, mate, that's gold. That's what people want. That is what people will flock to. Unless they're really tax savvy. Sorry, tech savvy. I said that completely backwards. Unless they're really tech savvy, they're just going to go and, uh, and do this kind of stuff. Now, speaking of that, so Gary Gensler, he's the new SEC, the chair of the SEC. And he has said, or he's told the House of Financial Services Committee that Congress should consider regulating crypto exchanges. And i.e., you know, having them like banks and that they're uh, insured and things like that from scams and funds and all the rest of it, and also regulated to, you know, prevent that kind of stuff. Now the idea is that consumer protections could help decrease fraud and manipulation. Now, could being the word, because we've got really, really big companies like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and all that, and they've done fraud and manipulation and been caught out. So simply regulating crypto exchanges based on history and the old way doesn't really guarantee anything. That's the sad part. But look, I do think that we need to have them uh, more regulated, not overly regulated and not you know massively heavily regulated but more regulated particularly around yeah scams and you know price manipulation and that but if it's simply going to be a silly little monetary fine like the big banks pay then the crypto exchanges will literally just become exactly like banks in the future that is honestly what will happen it's just the old system will draw in the new system as opposed to the new system drawing in the old system and that is what i fear now, it says here, it'd be good to consider whether to bring investor protection to the crypto exchanges. I do think we need that insurance, absolutely. And I think that uh, I think that if that were the case, because right now the exchanges trading in these crypto uh, assets do not have a regulatory framework, uh, either at the SEC or our sister agency, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, that could instill greater confidence. And it will. That's what people are worried about at the moment. Anyone who hasn't touched cryptocurrencies right now is worried that it's a scam, that they'll lose all their money and things like that. If you can instill that confidence, crypto grows and that's when we really have that kind of flash moment where everything starts to happen really, really fast and people start to pile in. If you think people are piling in now, you're wrong. Again, we may have a couple of percent of the entire world's population into crypto at the moment. And again, I'd be surprised if it's over five or ten percent. And I, I'm happily, I'm happy to be, you know, corrected if that's wrong. But I think five percent is probably, you know, I, I think that'd probably be the high end. I think we'd possibly be lower. So imagine when we get 20, 30, 40, 50, and then you know, starting to get into the 70, 80 percent of the world into crypto. Then imagine the prices of things. It'd be unbelievable. All right. South America's largest e-commerce company adds $7.8 million worth of Bitcoin to its balance sheet. Again, this is why I don't think Bitcoin's going to go a whole lot lower. Companies are still getting things sorted and they're still buying and they're likely just buying the dip. The large uh, Argentinian e-commerce company, hopefully I say this right, Mercado Libre, has brought $7.8 million worth of BT shortly after enabling Bitcoin payments. Uh, Masado Libre, the leading fintech and e-commerce company in Argentina, has joined other large corporations in holding BTC on its balance sheets. And this won't be the last again. It's still, they're going to be considered an early adopter. That's the funniest thing, you know, MicroStrategy, Tesla, and a number of other companies have come before them. But they are still very, very early uh, in this piece, particularly when you're looking at a kind of, you know, five to 10 to 20 year kind of uh, time frame, super early. 
Right, last but not least, the Federal Bureau of Investigations is putting up warning signs on Bitcoin ATMs uh, in, I don't know how to say that, uh, county uh, of the US state of Ohio to warn residents not to fall for scams, asking victims to send money to scammers via Bitcoin ATMs. So, again, that is, that, and that's the problem. You know, you go to a Bitcoin ATM to get some money and send it, and, you know, you can get scammed right from the ATM. We still have scams coming from, you know, normal, regular uh, fiat ATMs. So it's not like it's unheard of in that space. But this is just another reason to kind of scare people off. And they're like, oh, no, see, I knew it was all scammy. Uh, Not understanding that, you know, you have scams in your regular ATMs as well. You know, uh, card phishing scams and all all the rest of it. So it's not like it's just, you know, Bitcoin ATMs. It's other ATMs that have these kind of things going on. But when all you hear is, you know, Bitcoin's a scam, cryptocurrency's a scam, everyone's going to lose their money and you've never really looked into the space and you read something like this or hear about something, you know, my first time I'm going to go buy Bitcoin and I get to this Bitcoin ATM and it tells me about all these scams, well, obviously I'm probably not going to buy it and that pushes uh, that person away. So this is what we need to look out for and be careful for. Uh, This will kind of hold back the space, unfortunately, and is why... Well, you know, we unfortunately we do need more regulation. Just again, hopefully not that really heavy regulation that turns the new system into the old. We want the old system to turn into the new system and find that you know good equilibrium between the two. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You know, there were definitely some coins that were on the gain train, but overall the market was down. So you know, if you uh, outplayed the market, well done to you. And I'll see you next time.